This feels super awkward after six months of not doing this, but there's only one way to break the ice, guys. Hey, yo, what's up, what's up, guys? Zay here with another episode of Zay's Experience. Sorry that I've been out for such a long time, but hopefully this video makes up for the reason for it. And today we're gonna be talking about gynecomastia. This is uh, something that I've been trying to make a video about for several months now, but I haven't been able to muster the courage to go ahead and do so. But without further ado, let's get this show on the road, guys. <sighs> Thanks for joining me in another episode of Safe Experience, guys. And for this particular video, I would really like you guys to press that like button and that share button. One, because I want this video to go out to anybody that has been dealing with gynecomastia and the like button would really really push the youtube algorithm to maybe put this out there and if you guys leave a comment down there it would be even better and if you guys again like the video definitely subscribe but yes guys it's been a very long time since i've done uh, a youtube video and one of the reasons for it has been or some of the reasons might be work 2020 a bunch of stuff has changed in my life just like many of you guys out there but something that was major that i think is one of the biggest things that has happened to me in a very long time was that i got gynecomastia surgery for all those of you out there that don't know what gynecomastia is gynecomastia is the enlargement of the male breast tissue males also have glands just like women do but they do not fully develop in the way women's do. These usually develop due to estrogen and other factors. When that happens in males, it enlarges the tissue as well, causing men boobs, men pecs that have been enlarged. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys out there know somebody that has this condition, probably overweight. It tends to happen a lot when people are overweight. It tends to happen when people are going through puberty, but usually it doesn't stick with them for the entire for the entirety of their life it tends to go away but sometimes it definitely sticks with you and more than any other generation specifically one of the reasons why i wanted to talk about this is you are seeing more and more people nowadays get man boobs i had them since i was 12. it was a traumatizing experience to say the least but i've had man boobs up until just last year just uh, my th and, and this i turned 30 last year and i had them i had men boobs from whenever since i can remember and i think i was 10 like or 8 when i started to kind of develop those men boobs up until 30. pseudogynecomastia is when you have something that looks exactly like gyno but it's not it's basically you just have a lot of uh, fat behind that area and sometimes it dangles a little bit and that tends to be all it is. But you can really tell sometimes when somebody has gyno it, it, by a couple of things. Something that people with gynecomastia know and gyne people with gynecomastia do is they like to be in cold environments. One of the reasons is because if you have gynecomastia, your areola will go ahead and enlarge and if it's really hot it'll enlarge and it'll look like a female breast like the areola of a female breast when when it looks like that it really sucks it's very temperature driven but if you're in a cold situation sometimes it can even look normal it can even just look like you have a little bit of fat depending on how bad your gynecomastia is but um it can also look a little bit like a peck and again it all depends on the situation me I know I prefer to hide them. I used to wear a lot of layers. I used to wear sweaters all the time. Let me give you a little bit of background of why this is such a, a near and dear topic to, to my heart and why it's been so hard for me to talk about it, why it took me so long to make this video. Ever since I can remember, I've been bullied, just like many people with gynecomastia. I'm pretty sure if you have gynecomastia or, or have had gynecomastia in your life, you've been bullied. I used to be called all kinds of names, guys. I used to be called uh, Chicho, Chichon. Um, uh, uh, there was several characters that they would point out to specifically, but I would just get called names back and forth. 
every day in school, people would come up to me and be like, hey, and they would call me and I'd be like, hey, what's up? You know, I was super naive and super young back then. So people would come up to me and be like, hey, what's up? And they would be like trying to high five me. And then all of a sudden they go scoop and they would do this to my to my man, but you know, they would push it up. And so due to these reasons and many other types of bullying, I got into fights consistently. I got into a fight every other day, if not every day, or uh, into some kind of argument with somebody because I was getting bullied so much, you know? This wasn't the only thing by far. This was a super devastating thing for me because it's a major confidence blow in so many ways, guys. Imagine going through middle school and high school and the girls are actually making fun of your gyno. They don't even know it's gyno. They don't know it's called that. They just, they're just seeing a guy with a boob, you know? It's like, it's not supposed to happen. So you see girls that actually are calling you out. It's like, hey, Chicho, or like, hey, dude, you got boobs. Or like, like, what's up with the boobs, dude? Like, that's not what you want to hear from maybe somebody that you like. That's not what I hear. That's not what you want to hear from a girl that you maybe thought like, oh shit, like, I, like, what do you say, you know? Back then, I didn't know any better. My nutrition obviously wasn't on point, um, and my parents, they sure as heck, you know, weren't able to teach me, like, what the hell. My dad would leave the house every day at three in the morning, would come back at six o'clock, and would pass out at the table because he was so tired from work. He would then, after passing out, he would get up. I don't, I'm not even sure what time sometimes he got up to, take a shower because he worked on um, making cement pools. So he would take a shower. He was filled up with cement all the way up to all of his arms and everything. And at one point he, at some point during the night, he would take a shower, go to bed and wake up and do it all over again. Six to seven times a week sometimes, you know? It was uh, nothing short of some badass work ethic from my dad. And my mom, she, she had her own issues, so she never kind of was around much. Uh, so I never had anybody to kind of look over me and maybe taught me how to eat, what to do, exercise maybe or anything like that, which could have possibly helped. But again, this, this was devastating for me, you know, um, I'm here, I'm a pubescent kid trying to get a girlfriend and they are making fun of me. So that, that, that destroys your confidence in so many ways, guys. It's, it's really hard to explain it. So after all this. I kind of started to research into a couple of things over the years and obviously with um, some support from one of my best friends, his name is uh, Jonathan as well. Um, then the reason why I say as well is um, my middle name is Zaid, but my name is also Jonathan, it's Jonathan Zaid. So I like to be called Zaid because it was one of the reasons how I kind of reinvented myself over all these years. Jonathan was this, it's my name it's the first name that i was given that that kind of represents what i was in the past and over these years i've managed to turn myself into like w right when i got to college i start i started having everybody call me zaid because i was reinventing what i was i had to change what i was because the years prior to college were very hard for me and i i, I wanted to stop being that person but it was a way to kind of reinvent what I was at the moment or the perception that I had of myself. So over the years, I started training, started informing myself of gynecomastia, started trying to find ways to reduce it. Nothing ever worked. <laughs> I tried uh, all kinds of, trust me guys, I, I tried all kinds of things. I tried uh, cold therapy, cryotherapy. I've tried uh, fasting. For trust me, no lack of fasting. You guys saw me on my uh, my trip to, to Japan about two years ago. I lost. I believe I went down all the way to 165. You know, and my man boobs were still there. You've seen the progression in my videos. <laughs> I I went to the gym and exercised my pecs like crazy, all angles, upper part, middle part, lower part, and no shortages. I at one point I was doing something from a, a famous bodybuilder. His name is called Chris Gethin, um, and his teachings, although very bodybuilder esque and outdated at the time. Or maybe not outdated, but it was kind of what was out there, you know? So it wasn't, it's outdated now, but it's definitely something that helped me progress in the right direction or it helped me be in way better direction. So in no case am I talking crap about Chris Gethin, 
he looks like a solid dude. I've never met the guy, but hey, maybe one day. Um, in any case, uh, I was doing the whole bodybuilder thing, 67 meals a day, cardio in the morning, cardio in the afternoon, uh, doing the DTP program from Chris Gethin. If you guys have done it or know about it, you know what it entails, but it basically destroys anything, uh, specifically the, the chest, chest and back stuff holy crap like when you do a routine for chest and back it, it really really sucks but it really really works like a lot of stuff helped to better my physique but my gyno never budged it didn't matter it didn't matter how much i did it just sometimes it reduced from maybe this to this like that's all that happened and then you could see a peck in the back you can see a large portion of peck in the back and it was very weird. It was like, okay, I can see that your chest is developed. I can see it's big, but I can definitely also tell that that's a boob. Like there's a boob there. Like what's going on, dude? And some people you usually used to tell me just like, dude, lose the weight, lose the weight. And I would, I would lose a fairly good amount of weight to a point where maybe like, I guess the best kind of condition that I've ever been in uh, was in my CrossFit days. And even back then, uh, I remember my trainer would used to tell me, dude, come on, all you have to do is be on top of your nutrition, man. Like, and I would tell him, dude, I'm not being douchey or anything like that, but I probably eat sometimes, like I, I eat pretty good and pretty clean. Again, bodybuilder-esque uh, type of eating, you know? So six to seven meals a day, low carb actually i was doing low carb back then and it really helped but even then like none of that helped uh, regardless uh over the years i've i've done so much uh and obviously it's not it hasn't been until these past years where i've kind of gone all out as to like what how much i've been able to educate myself on the topic but about two years ago, I finally kind of mustered the courage to kind of go to my doctor and talk to them about it. Like, hey, um, this is a situation that I've had. Um, what can I, what can be done or wh what is this? I I've read, I've read about it and it looks like it's gynecomastia. Is it gynecomastia? And Sure enough, my doctor said, well, let's go ahead and let's run some labs and let's make sure it's not pseudo-gynecomastia first. Because what you're telling me is that you've exercised all your life. I can see that you've exercised. Like, you don't look like a person that doesn't exercise. You carry, he, she, at that point, I was weighing like 195. And she said, you definitely look like you weigh around 180. Like, you obviously have a little bit of extra, but it shouldn't be like that you know like it looks like something's happening you can definitely tell you're athletic so let's go ahead and make a couple of things happen and the first thing that she had me do was a mammogram <laughs> if you're a guy and you're getting a mammogram you know shit's wrong i'm sorry <laughs> it, it it's not cool but what they basically do is if you've ever had a mammogram guys if you ever had a mammogram ladies you can definitely speak to this but what they do is they basically go ahead weigh your men boob into a machine into like this tray they slap your boob on top of it and then all of a sudden a machine comes down and presses down on it and just kind of squeezes it as much as it can and they basically take a picture of it like kind of like an mri and that's it that's how you get a mammogram and what they ended up actually finding is when they when they actually showed me the picture and everything which i don't have she said you see this? This is basically how it looked. It looked like that. This is your pec. It's super solid. You can see how wide it is? Yes, it's super solid. So basically you could just see like the pec right here and then all the tissue over here. She's like, this, all this little extra, that shouldn't be there. That's that's a big amount of, of breast tissue that you have there. I was like, crap. So then the idea was what can be done? What can we do about this gynecomastia? So we tried the basic things, getting my testosterone to a good level, which it already was. It actually was like at the 700 to 800 levels, which isn't bad for a person at my age, which is what back then when we first started was like 28 to 29 years, you know? And she said, your testosterone's fine. You know, obviously we did blood work to check all that stuff out. Uh, where's your estrogen levels? Your, my estrogen levels were low. 
they were super low guys um i i can't pull up the the test results anymore because um back then my insurance was different than what it is right now um and they kept all the records and my dumbass didn't keep any of the records so sorry guys but my testosterone levels were super super high actually were they weren't super high they were just high or they were normal for a guy my age you know and then all these other things that we checked out that we tried out um to optimize my testosterone lower lower my estrogen and they just didn't work over a period of two years at all um so i was doing something right and she was super perplexed about this so she said we're gonna put you on tamoxifen so I just wanted to let you guys know, I just got off of the phone. I just, I was speaking to the doctor, to the plastic surgeon. She was super awesome. She was super nice and she was super real, which was, I was super surprised about finding. So yes, I'm saying super a lot cause it's a super day for me guys. This call couldn't have come at a better time in my life. Actually it could have come up <laughs> a lot sooner, but I mean, I've been fighting with gynecomastia ever since I was 12. I, I never knew about it. Um, it's tough. It's, it's, it's really rough, especially growing up. The amount of bullying that happens is, <laughs> uh, is ridiculous. It, you really learn to cope with it. You really learn to become a, a Teflon pan, as my brother says. You know, just Teflon skin, man. Just repel everything. You get really good at that, but there's a point where that has to stop. And um, today when I got called, the doctor offered me a couple of, she offered me a couple of options and she was very straightforward about it. You know, I had my, all my preconceived notions, you know, I've done my research quite a bit, you know, just like any guy that's suffering through this condition, we know what we're getting ourselves into most of the time. I knew, um, prior to this call what the options were going to be and that's exactly what i got but she has done s hundreds of surgeries from from what i got from our call and she was very straight up about it she said you know there's risks when using the pill and there's risk when doing the actual surgery you know because what they do is they actually remove the gland from behind the nipple and what ends up happening is a lot of times the skin ebbs up being dead because Basically, you take all the nerve receptors and everything and sometimes the skin dies and a lot of people's nipples go white, sometimes black, sometimes they heal up properly, sometimes they don't. So that's the true risk factor with the surgery. Yes, you do take out the back part and yes, you will get a flat chest, but there is a lot of risk that goes along with it. And with this pill that they offer, there is secondary side effects from what I hear, but she has dealt with hundreds of patients and what she told me was that she hasn't gotten one person with bad side effects and I have gotten I think like one or two cases out of all the research I've done that have gone bad so if I am one of those heck but then I just got a terrible roll of the dice shit <laughs> at this point shit just 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 take me out but all that aside um she explained all the everything to me and she was very straightforward about it and she said i think you might just be a good candidate to try out the pill right now since you are borderline like those look very wrong and borderline you you're right there you can you if you use the pill it might just work for you and there's no scarring again the side effects they rarely happen they, they happen to like a, a really small amount just some really small percentage of the people so I decided to go with the pill. So for the next three months, I'm going to be on this pill that the doctor gave me. Um, it's actually out of all the pills that I've checked out. Um, it's the most updated version. So I'll go pick that up and show it to you guys. And we'll keep track of these memboos because I'm not ready for a boob job. And I know they're members. I call them my memboos. I think I've grown a little attached to them by now. <laughs> Tamoxifen is a prescription drug that they normally use. Bodybuilders that usually inject themselves with steroids and stuff like that, or they're super saucy, <laughs> uh, they 
tend to go ahead and use that. So that way they can reduce or they can they can reduce the impact of the estrogen because if testosterone goes up, usually like this is something a lot of people don't realize that are not in the bodybuilding world. But if you use steroids, usually testosterone goes up, but along with it, estrogen also goes up. So to minimize the impact of maybe them getting memboos, which a lot of them end up getting the memboos or the gynecomastia, they use a tamoxifen and it helps diminish that quite dramatically in some cases, depending on the person. So in my case, it worked for like a month or two and that's it. And the reason why I'm telling you it worked, it went from like this to maybe this and that's it. But I was able to notice it and even my girlfriend was able to notice it. But what sucked was over a, like over a long period of time, like if I ate like just like a cheat meal or something, or maybe, maybe it wasn't even about my eating, like all of a sudden it would just look like one day it could be okay. And then the next day it could be like, boof, like, crap like it looks horrible again and there was nothing really like i felt i could do like the tamoxifen wasn't helping nothing was really helping so it was quite discouraging over a period of almost two years to try this and the doctor said well there's one other way and i'm pretty sure you know what i'm talking about and she said it's surgery but surgery is no walk in the park and uh, here's like, here's what you have to hear about. And this is what I think a lot of people don't talk about is yes, gynecomastia surgery, if it goes right, tends to be pretty awesome. But if it goes wrong, it can also leave some deformities And my doctor showed me some pictures like, hey, this is the good cases. This is what you usually hear about, but nobody ever talks about this. And she was showing me some pictures of some gyno that has gone wrong you know that some people that have had like really horrible cases my case was bad um but there's some people uh, that have really bad cases and then like like dude i'm, I'm so sorry like i, I like th there's even worse so my case um again i've gone through some rough stuff but there's some people out there that it's gone very very rough that i don't even compare to so i can't imagine even the trauma that they are living through you know so my doctor said, in your specific case, like you, when was the last time? Because this is something that consistently came up on our talk, on our talks. Um, again, I didn't see her once. I saw her, I believe, like 12 times over the past two years. Um, she told me, since, since when have you had these? And I said, since I can't remember. So my doctor went ahead and said, in your particular case, I'm a little worried that it could be something much greater than that, or that this could potentially metastasize into something much bigger. You know, it could potentially turn cancerous if it keeps on growing. Cause it looks like, like, like from pictures that I showed her some pictures and she said, it looks like it might just be growing, you know? Uh, but you, it, what's crazy is your estrogen levels are low and your testosterone levels are high. And we got my, my testosterone up to 900 at one point, guys, no creams, no nothing, none of that crap. Like literally I was just, <laughs> I was exercising, I uh, was eating pretty well. And at that point, that's when I was at the carnivore diet. So maybe that had something to do with it. And I was at one point, um, taking liver caps and a bunch of other stuff, you know, like vitamin, uh, D3. I was uh, having a lot more sun. I was being out in the sun a lot more, a bunch of stuff, you know, I was really optimized and I was, which is super high, you know, that's like the range for like an 18 to 21 year old prime shredded physique. You throw a burger at them or 20, 30 burgers at them and they'll turn it into a six pack, you know, that kind of a situation. And even then she was like, yeah, this is not normal at all. So in, in my very specific case, she said, I'm worried that it can turn into something bigger. So in this case, I'm going to call it a medical risk because I think if you go down this same path over the next couple of years, it could definitely, it could, I could see it turn maybe into something cancerous, which I have seen or something that could really leave you like with a deformity. So at this point, this is when we talked about logistics and everything. And my insurance luckily covered my entire procedure, which is also another big thing. Um, Another big reason why I was like, you know what, let's just go ahead and pull the trigger. So after a year and a half almost of trying out different options, trying out different things, seeing how the medicine worked, a tamoxifen, me optimizing everything, me um, fasting, uh, doing all these things, dry fast, uh, prolonged fast, carnivore diet, all this. I finally 
went ahead in this past November and got my gynecomastic surgery. So I'm here at the doctor's office and I'm waiting for the doc to actually come in and kind of perform everything. I can, this is shit. This is from the mask. <laughs> I have a ring, literally. Yeah, but I'm just waiting for the doctor to come in and just basically debrief me on everything that's going to happen tomorrow. I'm, um, I'm not nervous right now, but it hasn't kinked in yet. But it shouldn't be... I mean, it is a little terrifying, to be honest. And so I think, uh, I mean, everything's going to go well, I think, I hope. I've never gotten surgery done, so this is my first time ever coming in for procedure. We'll see how this goes. He might just get one of these. <laughs> Ooh. Nope. Textured ones, yay. For those of you guys who don't know what gynecomastic surgery does, it basically goes ahead in that gland that is right in front of your pec. The doctors go in, cut into the areola at the bottom of the areola. So basically what it is, is a small incision around the areola from let's say three o'clock to nine o'clock. They go in there, they take out the breast tissue and or the enlarging tissue and it literally comes out in like a little ball. Each one of mine was about two pounds. So like the one and a half to two pounds, that's what the doctor said. Um, I wasn't able to see them. I know some people get them as, I guess as a reminder, as a cool or awkward souvenir and they keep them, you know, if they tell the doctor, hey, can you go ahead and save it for me? Which I, fuck, God, God knows I did, did not want it, want it near me. Um, I wish I would have seen it, but the doctor said, unfortunately, that I wasn't able to in my situation. And since I was getting the surgery kind of uh, covered and completely for free, I, I was like, yep, sure, just do it. I don't want to keep them. I don't even want to see them, but kind of did, but it kind of didn't, you know, rough feelings there. After my boob job, because that's what I ended up getting, guys, I ended up getting a boob job. <laughs> I, I mess around with my girlfriend now, kind of. We go back and forth at it and she's like, you didn't get a boob job. And, and she's saying it in like a kind of serious way. And I'm like, yeah, I got a boob job. Hell yeah, I got a boob job. Uh, <laughs> it was very rough. That first week after the surgery, it was very rough. They sew everything back up from the inside out and they put two giant, two pieces of plastic that go from here, from your chest, all around here and they come out. They're called drains. Those drains lived with me uh, for about a week, week and a half. And let me tell you, uh, it was painful because they were attached to my skin with like little pieces of wire. It was just part of the procedure. It was part, it was, it was part of what had to happen, you know? And that week was super weird. Not only because of that, because I was able to see these two small little bags that I had with me and the, the, that were the drains and the blood that was coming out of me and I had to dump him consistently and all that. But what was also weird was looking down. There was nothing, like right now I look down and there's nothing where there was men boobs before, which I've lived with throughout 20 years, you know, 29 years. Um, now there's nothing. It's It was very weird to cope with actually in a good way cope with it in a good way but um i told my girlfriend a couple of times like this is weird like i don't i don't know if i can even get used to it which i did i got used to it obviously so guys we're in here with a doctor um she's still not in here yet but it's just crazy it's only been a week and uh yeah it looks it looks in quite different. I wasn't expecting it to look this different, but the drains are no longer pumping out a bunch of fluid. So I think they might just be coming out. And for all those of you who were wondering how they are attached to your skin, this is about to get graphic. Warning guys. So as you guys can see, it's right attached right there. And there's this little cable that's attached to my actual skin. And you can see all this going all the way over here. Same goes to the other side. And this is how it looks. I'm gonna have to. It looks very dramatic, guys. I haven't done any exercise. I haven't done any, anything, anything this week. And for how it looks, I know it looks bad, but it's been getting a lot better after every day. And my chest for the first time I look down and, you know, 
looks like a normal peck. I don't have a girl's boob, you know, in place where it's not supposed to be. Um, I was telling my girlfriend that it's a not just a major confidence boost. It's just weird looking at my chest and and realizing that I can't that 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 it's not something that I've lived with with all my life. That it's something that different, that foreign, that this kind of normal feel, how it should be, is actually foreign. So yeah, guys, I'll definitely update you right now on what the doctor tells me, but hopefully these come out today. And as you can see, they'll go ahead and they'll just snip that little wire off and they're gonna pull that out and the drains are gonna come out and I won't be having to carry these around everywhere with me. That's it. Whoa. <laughs> I saw it. That is creepy. And put a little ointment on the hole, okay? And let me tell you guys, um, it definitely has been one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. And let me tell you why. Obviously, it's, it's no light decision. And in my case, it was made easy by my insurance. And I'm not saying that in a small way. It, it definitely was a lot more easy than most people because this this surgery is not cheap guys it's like five thousand dollars to twelve thousand dollars so for all of those of you guys out there thinking about getting the surgery um I, I know it's a it's a tough tough decision so i was very lucky in that sense but now that i look back on it i can honestly tell you that i'm very very happy that i took that decision to say yes my confidence has taken a 180 turn it it has changed me in so many different ways that for me the first week after surgery like not feeling anything was traumatizing in a in a good way it was so weird not having this like up until now like i still touch the area and i'm like fuck there's there's just nothing there and when i removed that vest i and i saw myself without my gynecomastia it was weird. Like I almost kind of wanted to cry. I'm not I'm not going to lie. I almost kind of wanted to cry or I think I got teary-eyed for a quick second. Like I didn't know how to process it. I was at the doctor and I was like, actually no, I was here with my girlfriend. I remember I was switching off the pads once and she said, "How does it look?" And I wasn't able to fully see cuz I was changing the pads just from here like I would sip and unzip the actual um vest and so I went ahead and just kind of switched it and I was like, "Oh, it looks weird, like it, there's there's no man boob there. But I wasn't able to fully seal it until I got to the doctor. I was literally waiting for it. And when I took off the vest, it was like, <sighs> like, that is not me. Like I was telling the doctor as I was with her, she's like, how are you feeling? And I said, I don't know. And she said, you're not the first one. This happens all the time. She said, this is like 99% of the time. Um, there was, she said there was only one kid that I've ever been with that actually was like, like not shocked at all, you know, or, or he was just like, I, I've been looking for, like he, he told her something along the lines of, I've been looking at, l looking forward to this so long that I knew exactly how it would look after which, which is, which is why I'm not shocked. Like he dreamed about it apparently so much. He, he was like so into like this is how i want to look this is how i want to look this is how i want to look and i believe it was like a bodybuilder or something like that that when he finally saw it he's like that's how it should look you know so when i saw it i i wasn't just not definitely not prepared for that again my confidence was just like when it came to me taking off my shirt like my confidence it was just it was not there guys <laughs> it just it didn't exist there was no confidence uh so it took some time it took it, it i'm still it's i still haven't adjusted fully to not seeing my men boobs you know like I, I take off my shirt sometimes and i'm like fuck like like there's just no other way to kind of process it it's it was just like uh like this was rough um but in retrospect now that i've gone through the entire process uh i can honestly tell you guys that I wouldn't want to have it any other way. If the doctor was to tell me once again, would you go through the procedure? I would go through the procedure a million times, which wasn't fun, but I would go through that week 
a million times if I was able to to just have avoided all the crap that happened through my life which at the end of the day when I think about it, it kind of helped me build some character it did give me a very tough skin <laughs> in in many ways I, I believe or I think at least um, well Z how does it look you've been you've been pumping this up for a very long time now how does it look after the surgery well let me show you so this is how everything looks guys after um, it's been about five months, right, babe? Mm -hmm. Since the gyno surgery. So, that is how my chest is actually supposed to look, guys. Um, this is kind of how it looks after the gyno. Like, th this used to be filled up all the way up to over here, over this section. So every time I look down, I would definitely see my man boob kind of protruding all the way over here like I like the, it was like that much that was coming out all the time and you guys could definitely see it on on a lot of my videos but it's not there anymore sure it doesn't look perfect it looks a little weird like especially if you do something like like this you know like this one specifically looks a little weird like it looks dented but trust me guys if you've lived with gyno for any period of time <laughs> this is nothing. This is a joke. This is the best thing that could have happened to you. I I can live with this any day. Um, take off my shirt in public and look like this versus having gynecomastia. So, am I happy? Yes. I I'm I'm super happy that I got my my surgery. Did it actually do something for my self esteem? Heck yes. Like I I've never been as confident on myself as I've as I am today. Um, it took me time to actually get used to the confidence. That's as weird as that may sound like I wasn't, it was very tough for me. I told my, my girlfriend all the time, Hey, like I, I just, I don't know how to process this. You know, I've never, um, it, it's just such a new thing for me guys. Um, I'm still getting used to it. Don't get me wrong. But yes, right now at the moment, uh, this is how it's looking. It's been five months. And it kind of started looking like this after like a month or so. So yeah, um, super happy that I made the decision, super happy that I made the leap. Now there's definitely like nothing when I see the side. Obviously this is something that I had to work with. <laughs> this one bottom part I still have to work with, but now this doesn't look super awkward. Yeah, it looks different, but heck, I'll, I'll take this any day of the week versus my gyno breasts but yeah guys that's that's kind of like the main thing i wanted to put this video out for for much more of a reason than me just kind of showing you guys hey another dude that went through gynecomastia got his surgery got everything done yay z cool peace no um it's because i wanted to put that this message out there that guys you you especially now this generation you guys are not alone try to find somebody that has gone through it that I, like try looking up all these videos try learning from my experience you know it took me a very long time to kind of man up to it and get the surgery done and obviously in, in some cases it might be a monetary situation but try to find out if your if your um insurance covers it if you have insurance if not try to make it a goal man like if you've, if you've done everything if you know that it's not pseudo gynecomastia that that you don't have just a little bit of excess fat and that's because you don't do much exercise and that's where you're getting the men boobs versus you actually having an enlarged gland which is kind of the, the actual gynecomastia uh, make sure you get it assessed by a doctor and see what your options are you know try maybe try tamoxifen maybe try some of these because some it's, it does work for some people not for everybody i know it works for a very small amount of people but maybe in combination with something else it really works for you me i tried the carnivore diet i tried a bunch of stuff i tried fasting along with the tamoxifen along with a bunch of stuff i was consistently doing exercise and trying to lose the weight and it just wasn't happening i put a bunch of muscle behind that pec that is still till this day there like even though i don't do many chest exercises it's still there like you know just like my legs i don't do a bunch of uh squats with like 365 pounds like I used to, but my legs are not huge like they used to, but they're pretty big. You know, they're not, they're, I, I don't have small legs and that's because of kind of the remainders. Same thing here with the pecs, you know, like if you've done everything guys, I highly, highly encourage you to maybe get the surgery if it's maybe in the plans. I know I don't regret it the least 
this year. Um, my one goal this year is to be able to go to the beach and actually take off my shirt and not feel ashamed of how I look. That's gonna be my ultimate goal and I'm probably gonna record this because um, this is gonna be a very life-changing moment I think for me or this is something that I've looked up to because trust me there's nothing worse than going to the beach and knowing that you work your ass off in a gym all the time and that that you are physically fit to run a marathon that you can basically almost compete at a super high level at a sport and still have male breasts you know I really look forward to this summer but that's the goal I'm working right now and kind of growing my shoulders my my body like in a different way than I normally would but that's because I I have a goal in my mind and I and I want to achieve it and I want to go over to that to a very specific beach this year and I want to take off my shirt and feel good in, in, in my own skin for the first time in my life so if you guys are out there and if you guys are having a hard time with gynecomastia um, Make sure to reach out in the comment section, guys. That's what that's what YouTube is ultimately for. I think it's it is a search engine. I realize it for videos, but at the end of the day, it's just made out of people like me and you that are just trying to make their way through life. And uh, hopefully, this brings you, if anything, uh, maybe gives you a little bit of courage to see that just because you've lived with it for such a long time doesn't mean you have to stick to it for the rest of your life. You can definitely do something about it, but you have to take the first step. Whether it is to exercise better, maybe find out alternatives, methods, or getting a surgery, or working working your way up to getting the surgery, um, it's all gotta come from you. And if you look for the right support, I'm pretty sure you guys can go ahead and do it. But in any case, guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Safe Experience. Please go ahead, comment, like, and subscribe. Share this video with somebody that you might know that might be going through the situation, that might be experiencing gyno, and maybe want a way out or, or just don't know how to deal with the situation. Um, you know, go ahead and share this video with them. Hopefully, it, it helps them in some way, or hopefully, it just... Uh, gives them some courage to maybe go ahead and take the next step, whether it be to get surgery, whether it be to maybe start, you know, getting some money, finding out with their insurance, whether it covers it or not, if they have insurance or not, you know, like working towards a goal, because it's something that is definitely that, although it is part of you right now, it doesn't fully defy you guys, and you can definitely do something about it. And taking my guy to out was the best thing that I've done for my self-esteem and my confidence, for sure. And sorry for being out for such a long period of time, but uh, glad to be back and I'm gonna be here pumping out way more videos and definitely stick around for an update of how everything is looking after the gynecomastic surgery. So, Zay, out. Peace.